G'day. Many popular texts in mathematics describe the game of NIM. Um, it's a wonderful little game, has a wonderful winning strategy to it, uh, but not many texts go to the depth of explaining a wonderful connection with the powers of two. Uh, some do, but not all do. So what I'd like to do today is kind of give away answers without really asking the questions about showing how, uh, if you th focus on the powers of two, it leads to a lovely way to think about the game of NIM. I'll explain the game uh, briefly here, but really if I was doing this with an audience, I'd take my time, I'd develop this, this arithmetic of the game slowly, let us discover that what I'm about to give away uh, today. But this video is just about giving away answers, I'm afraid. All right, just, just to get our heads back to what NIM is. NIM is a game played with piles of coins or pebbles. So, whoops, I need a pen. So maybe there's a pile, I don't know, say of six coins, and then a pile of five coins, and a pile of, I don't know, 17,002 coins. Any number of piles, any number of coins in each pile. And the idea is that two players, Albert and Bilbert, will take turns selecting a pile and then removing some or even all the coins from that pile. And they'll keep doing this. For example, maybe Albert will select the uh, middle pile and take away three coins and make this a pile of two. Oops. Maybe then uh, Bilbert would come along and select the third pile and take away 1,700 coins and also make that a pile of two. And then maybe uh, Albert will come back and select the first, uh, maybe the middle pile again, and take away all the coins from that pile, leaving a pile of zero, and so on. The idea is to leave your opponent with no coins, so they're stuck. That is, you win if you're the last, if you, you, you take the last coin and present your opponent with a pile of, with, with empty piles. All right, that's the game of NIM. It's good to play with this for a while. In fact, some obvious things stare out at you, like a game of NEM with just one pile is not much of a game. If I just give you one pile of coins, uh, the first person is guaranteed to win. If they're clever, they just take all the coins from that one pile and done. All right, a game of two piles is a little more interesting. So let's, I know, a game of, is that seven? And a game of four, there's two piles. Now, if you play with this a while, I bet you will come up with the following strategy. Again, this is a video about giving away answers. It's not very, not very good of me, but here goes. Play with this for a while, and you'll realize that if you're the first player with two unequal piles, what you can do is make a move that equalizes the piles. And then what happens is you'll find that your opponent's in a bit of a pickle. Whatever she does, she's going to have to create a, a situation of two piles that are different in size. So maybe she'll take two coins from this pile, so now to four and two. But you, as first player, can always mimic what she does. And since she's sort of stuck in a game of being mimicked, she will be always be creating odd pile, an odd, odd sized, or different sized piles, which means she'll never be able to get to the winning state of zero and zero, two even piles of nothing. So you can always mimic her, and whatever you does, she does, she'll never be able to get to the symmetrical case of zero, zero, because she'll always be forced to break your symmetry, which means you're the one that will get to zero, zero. So a game of two piles is actually kind of interesting. It takes a little bit of thinking, and uh, you get to a nice strategy of see if you can always keep things mirrored, match up the numbers precisely, keep things even. All right. Game of three piles, and then four piles, five piles, are actually way harder. You know, if I did a game of, say, I don't know, seven piles, seven, is that seven? And a game of, say, five, and a game of three. If you play for this while, it's pretty hard to figure out what a strategy is. Um, but you might get there, and there's some things you can say, you can start playing with it, and you get a feel for it, and it actually takes a very long while to go from scratch to figure out a way to think about NIM. All right, here goes, but I'm going to give you a very lovely way to do it, which I don't find in many of the, the general texts on this subject. So there's a lovely connection to the powers of two. In fact, every number equals, it is, there's a unique sum of powers of two. For example, seven, I'll do this for each number in the piles, is, um, what is it? It's a four plus a two plus a one. Five is a four plus a one, and three is a two plus one. I'm going to encapsulate that in a table. So my table's going to have on the top the powers of two, and only going up to four in this case, it seems I need eights or sixteens. And the left side is the pile sizes. And to make seven, I used a four, I used a two, and I used a one. To make five, I used a one of the fours. I didn't use any of the twos. I and to make a three, I used no fours, but I did use a two, and I did use a one. So there's a table that encapsulates the information that's in my dim game. All right, I'm going to follow the idea of the two pile games to keep things even. And here is a wonderful strategy for the first player. Let me call him Albert, 
just so I can keep my, my thinking straight. So look at the columns. Again, I'm giving things away. This comes after many, many weeks of mulling and playing and trying to build up an intuition of NIM. But look at the columns. In this first column, oops, pen, has two ones, has an even number of ones. The second column has an even number of ones. This third column has an odd number of ones in it. Now the final state is going to be zero, 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 which is symmetrical. Nothing but zero, zero. They have no ones in every, any row or any column in particular. So that's, zero is even, so but the final state is going to be even, even, even. I'm going to see if I can follow that two-part strategy, two strategy of keeping things even. So my first move as Albert is to make a move that makes everything even. So I want to get this third column to also be even. That is, I'd like to change one of these ones to a zero. And I can do that any number of ways. Maybe I'll change this to a zero, which means I've taken one coin away from the first pile and made it a pile of six. Bingo. Six. Now let's think what this has done for my second player, Bilbert. Can Bilbert keep things even, 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 or is, even, is Bilbert forced to go to something being odd? Well, yes, he is forced to go to something being odd. If he touches, say, the... Uh, six pile. If he takes one away from it, that means it's going to be five. That means you have to, okay, have to do some carrying and base to arithmetic, but instead of having two, zero, it's going to have to be zero, one. This becomes a zero. This becomes a one. That is, he's changed this number, or he's changed, and he's changed this number. In which case, if he's changed a single number in a column, this has become odd. This has become odd. If he takes a three away, um, he'll have to change, have to do some carrying from this four, change this four to a zero. That's going to make this column. If he takes five away, this one's going to have to change to zero. In fact, if he takes anything away from the six part column, six pile, some one of the at least one of these numbers, ones and zeros, is going to have to change, and it's going to be forced then to make at least one column odd. In fact, if he takes anything away from the five pile, one of these numbers on this row is going to have to change. If this one changes, I've made the last column odd. If the zero changes, make the middle column odd. If this first number changes, one of these columns is odd. So whatever move he does, some number in, a, in these rows is going to have to change and it's going to have to create oddness somewhere. So I know that whatever Bilbert does, he's going to create oddness somewhere. So let's suppose Bilbert decides to take away 3 from this 5 part and make that a 2. So what's that got now? Ooh, this is now messy. So we currently have this is messy, 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 messy. All right, where are we? So right now we have 6, which is 1, 1, 0 pen please and uh, he's changing this 5 to a 2 which means this is becoming yep some numbers in that middle row are changing 0 1 0 now we've got odd odd and odd all the way through odd so he's really great as mods even uh, Albert's job is now to make everything even again so he's going to have to change every single number in each in each uh, in some particular row. All right, he can't change the first number in the zero that begins with a zero in the other uh, second two piles. So the only row he can work with is the six pile. That means he needs to change this one to a zero, this zero to a, this one to a zero, and this one zero to a one. That means he's got to work with the number five. This now has to be a five. His job, is, sorry, number one, sorry, which means he has to take away five more coins and make this a one. And we're back to even, even, even. And that's it, that's the strategy. So you can see now that actually there's a way that, presented with some oddness, Albert can always return the situation to nothing but even. And given with evens, Bilbert has no choice but to create some oddness somewhere. That means Bilbert will never get to the purely even state of zero, zero, zero. He's always creating oddness somewhere, which means he'll never see zero, zero, zero as he plays this game which means the first person to, see zero, to create 000 is going to be Albert. That's it. I love it. So the, let's, let's just do a more complicated example, just to make sure we've really got the idea. Suppose we play the game with a pile of oops, pen, say 17 and 21 and I know 9 and uh, 4. Let's play a 4 pile NIM game. Let's encode that in a table. I'm going to need some pretty high powers of 2, so 1, 2, 4, 8, I'm going to need 16, I don't 32. There's a pile of 17, there's a pile of 21, there's a pile of 9, there's a pile of 4. 17 is a 16 and a 1, so one of each of those and none of the others. 21 is a 16 and a 4 and a 1. Uh, 9 is an 8 and a 1. 
and a four is, well, it's just a four. Grand. All right, Albert goes first. He looks at this table. If he can memorize it, that'd be grand. That's even, that's okay. This is odd, this is even, this is even, and this is odd. So you've got to fix, somehow, change the uh, second and final columns. Okay, you can probably do that a number of ways. Um, he doesn't want to alter the very first column anyway, so he's going to focus on either the 9 or the 4. Um, probably can't use the 4 because that's not going to be able to, not be able to change that 0 to 1. So I guess he has to work with the 9 pile. He wants to change that to a 0 to make that an odd. Keep that the same, keep this the same, and wants to change that to a 0. Well, that tells him he needs to take all 9 pile coins away from that pile and make that part of 0. So that's now, we're in a state of even, even, even. And as before, Bilbert is going to change some numbers on some row. And whatever he changes is going to change a 1 to a 0 or a 0 to 1. And it's going to alter the evenness of that column. He's going to be forced to create some oddness. And off we go. So Bilbert is, Albert is sure to win this game. Lovely. Now, just, just if you have read about the game of NIM, um, what you'll find is they often talk about a NIM value for a game. And I've seen some very complicated explanations how to think about the NIM value. So let me just return this back to the beginning. The NIM value of the original game was a, was a 9, wasn't it? So it was a 9. All they're doing when they talk about NIM value, for they don't explain in terms of this connection to the powers of 2, is they look at the odd columns. And we had these odd columns initially. Then we had an odd column of the 8 and an odd column of the 1. And what they'll do is they add up these powers of 2 and say the NIM value of this game is 9. So someone tells me the NIM value of the game is 9, well I know that's an 8 plus a 1, so what they're really telling me is that currently is the second column is odd and the final column is odd. So the NIM value of the game tells you which columns are odd and tells me what move to make. I'm going to move, make a move, so it's the NIM value of the game is no columns of odd, that's a NIM, NIM value of 0. So if you ever see this exposition about NIM values, if you think about this table given by the powers of 2, you'll see everything makes sense. But they even talk about the addition of NIM games, that you can add up NIM values and they behave in strange ways. But all you're really doing is doing ordinary arithmetic on this table, but you're only focusing on the ones that leave you with odd numbered columns. That's it. So um, I guess I suggest then to go read some interesting books on, on NIM, play with the game in NIM, and see if you can understand how this powers of two um, scenario makes things clear and fabulous. All right, thanks so much.